I'm very excited to share today's episode with you guys. This was very special. This was a special episode for me. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting for you. So today's topic is psilocybin or yes, magic mushrooms, which, you know, sometimes when I talk to people about this, they laugh. They're like, are you talking about mushrooms, like magic mushrooms? I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about magic mushrooms. They've been one of the most impacting tools in my life for healing and transformation. And honestly, it's more than that. It's like being tapped into something that I didn't know we could be tapped into in this life. Um, kind of being on the other side of the veil or accessing a portal to enlightenment is basically how I would put it. And um, it's some, it's a sacred tool that I have used in my journey to help me tap into my intuition or the universe or spirit guides or whatever, however you want to put it. Um, that force that's greater than me, that it's been my access point to that. Um, and it's, it's an incredible tool. It's, it's a powerful tool and one that needs to be wielded wisely. And so I'm excited to have you here today from Natasha Pelgrim. I am butchering her last name. I'm so, so sorry, Natasha, but, um, Natasha comes to us, um, from Amsterdam where she is one of the founding members of the synthesis Institute. Synthesis retreats are the only legal psilocybin retreats in the world. Um, and so she's going to fill you in on what that looks like and what you might want to know about. So psilocybin is the psychoactive component of mushrooms. Okay. So that's the, the part that helps you have that, uh, hallucinogenic or psychedelic experience. Um, and she's going to fill you in on that, um, what their process is like, what they've seen, you know, how to do it ethically. Um, and it's just, it's awesome that they're able to do this legally because then we get to learn so much more. Um, these guys are connected to all the research, all of the leading experts in the world, on psychedelic therapies. Um, their commitment to excellence is amazing as you'll see, as you listen to her. Um, and we get into some other really cool, um, topics of just spiritual enlightenment. So, um, let me tell you a little bit more about Natasha. She's a sacred medicine woman, a mystic, a devotional creative, and a visionary who leads spiritual alchemy journeys and provides a compassionate space for healing and remembering. So she does more than just synthesis. Um, she's also the creator of the Phoenix rising course as a six month in-person, um, awaken self-love course. And, um, she also does is the founder of awaken the medicine within retreats. So she's amazing. You'll get a vibe for her right away. You can tell that she is, um, in her life's purpose for sure. Um, and, um, she's also co-creator of the women's leadership retreat at, uh, at synthesis. So very cool. Love hearing her insights on, um, the space for feminine, feminine healing energies, um, in, in these types of energetic healing and empowerment spaces. So yeah, I mean, I had so many questions for her. This is like, on a, I mean, this is heaven for me to be able to um, connect with her on this. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you learn. We get into dosages and, um, you know, experiences that we both had in, in these spaces. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's just bringing so much applicable information. You'll have a book list, you'll have a resource list and all of that by the time you get done with this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Here is Natasha Pilgrim. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away. And I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you 
you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right. So Natasha, I know I'm going to get so many questions. I'll probably refer so many people to this podcast. So, um, I think it would be best to start with just talking about synthesis retreats and what, what that is. Can you explain for inquiring minds, um, this awesome piece of information that exists in the, in the world. And I'm so excited to share what, what synthesis retreats. Yeah. Synthesis was founded in the Netherlands, uh, in 2018 by actually an American, two Americans and one a Dutch gentleman, uh, Martijn and, um, Martijn Schierp and Miles Katz, who are still the founding team members. And then uh, I joined uh, this group um, in the summer of 2018. And we started off facilitating retreats with three days and then moving into five day experiences where it's about understanding oneself, uh, seeking healing, transformation, and those for curiosity. And one of the main things that people probably want to hear about here is that we use is a substance called psilocybin. Um, in the Netherlands, uh, psilocybin is in a truffle, which is legal. And I, I can dive deeper into a little bit later in a podcast if needed. But um, this is a hallucinogenic uh, uh, substance, which is also found in many different mushrooms in South America, in Mexico. And in the Netherlands, the truffle, which is actually the root, it's underneath the ground, mm -hmm. that's legal. And mm -hmm. the what is above ground, the mushroom is illegal. Oh. And this actually comes from uh, something that had happened to a tourist where it went, it went really bad and it became mm -hmm. illegal. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the root, there is also psilocybin uh, in it. And that's uh, legal right now in the Netherlands and wow. another country in Jamaica, psilocybin is legal. And of course, the US is along uh, the way in Oregon, it's been uh, it's starting to legalize and it's two year plan for it. But um, yeah, so we work with this because uh, it helps you to understand yourself and to uh, expand your or or uh, your awareness or you have so many words you, you can give it um, but this has been used of course with many other plans for the purpose of healing um, we now have seen so much research uh, from imperial college and so many others uh, about depression ptsd uh, used in for veterans, but also end of life care, uh, people with uh, cancer patients. Um, so there is so many amazing researchers out there that are doing the work to prove that uh, these substances that have been used by indigenous traditions or wisdom traditions for thousands of years um, are coming now into into yeah into our western society from a scientific perspective and a clinical perspective of the benefits um so back in 2018 we started these retreats uh, transformation retreats but we work of course also with yoga breath work and uh everything is a is a key ingredient for one's healing and understanding and transformation so this is what we do in a nutshell. I can keep talking, but yeah, I want to keep space. <laughs> no, no, I keep, I keep going, keep going. <laughs> I have so many questions, but you're still, you're go. still answering so many of them as we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, no, I'll leave it at that. So see what, what comes up for you. <laughs> okay. All right. So a few questions I already have that I bet my listeners have too. Um, first with the truffle, which by the way, it's just, it's so interesting to me. Like when you really just sit back and look at it, that's something that grows on the ground. Somebody else is telling you that you can't eat that. 
Like you, you can't have it. The, the illegality, if you look at it just on a very like common sense perspective is really interesting. You know what I mean? I'm like, wait, how come yeah. you can tell me that I can't eat that thing that's growing on the ground? Like that's nuts, especially when it's been used for thousands of years. But my question is this, um, the truffle, uh, is the effect of the psilocybin from the truffle, from the truffle different in your opinion than the experience of psilocybin from the mushroom? Um, there, there's many different, um, um, yeah, many different writings out there. Many different people have different kinds of views, but there is one big difference and that's the dosage. So people mm -hmm. might not fully understand that a mushroom dosage in grams, uh, is different for the amount of psilocybin to take in, which mm -hmm. both are organic compounds, right? So we can never be precise only. Yeah. Uh, uh, companies like USONA, for example, who create synthetic psilocybin that is used for the research is precise in the amount of psilocybin. Mm. But once we have an organic compound, it's, 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 an, it's an average, right? So right. in the truffles, you need a higher amount of dosaging than in the mushrooms to have the similar kind of effect. And what you've seen in, in research to have basically the default mode network. So for people, you know, the, 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 the part of the brain that keeps us all together or where we say where our mind, our ego is based for us to have a certain healing and our brain to be able to process and to let go and to have the probably some of you have heard of ego dissolution, uh, you need to have a certain kind of dosage on average, mm. right? Um, everything I say here can is a paradox because this is the, this work and the work with uh, plant medicines, and this is the, my favorite word. I use psychedelics, but my favorite work is, is plant medicines. And um, what happens with the plant medicines is actually so interesting because one time a dosage will give you that mystical ego dissolution experience and mm -hmm. another time another dosage which is maybe half or a quarter will yeah. give you that. and we have still not figured out what that is mm. there is definitely nothing to do with your weight your height your age and tolerance for any other substances as alcohol or foods or anything Interesting. that's not true Mm. Um, however, I've approached it always from a very instinctive way, uh, of, mm. you know, at a certain point you get a certain time of experience and yeah. yes, we look at science too, but I, I think the reverence of giving the power to the par participant or client, whatever word you want to use for that, for the person that's taking that in or you're, you're guiding, um, I always find it important to get some sort of education. So really understand why people are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is that? And sometimes, you know, when there is quite some resistance for the person, you might think, hey, I'm going to give them a higher dose or I'm going to take a higher dose and that will help me. But sometimes that's too high and it becomes uh, challenging to navigate. Mm -hmm. So for if these are people for the first time listening, have never heard of this, they're going to be like, what, navigate dosages? We're, we're right. going deep in already. So welcome mm -hmm. to this podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so th these are things that are important to understand the, the, the difference. Now, the experience, there are quite some people that find the experience with mushrooms stronger than psilocybin. I also find it uh, depending on where I am in the world. And this is so interesting because when I have done mushrooms in Mexico in a traditional way with a Mazatec elder and the practices that are coming in there and the land and the nature, the mm -hmm. visions and the experience yeah. with fire and in nature are completely different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when I do it in the Netherlands where we are a, a, literally a water country, we created this land on water. Our, our collective is so based on water. So there is a whole different element coming into play here. And then another one is that the truffles don't, necess don't have a lineage or an indigenous practice attached because it's relatively new. There isn't a, a, another place that is working with a truffle that contains mm -hmm. psilocybin. Mm -hmm. All of the other indigenous practices are all working with the mushroom. Right. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting how mm -hmm. things can be connected in the traditions and the vision. So I'm always keeping it very open and very light to not uh, advocate for one truth. Yeah, uh, I love that. There's, 
Yeah, and there are some people who have had with 5-MeO DMT, no experience and suddenly have a low dose on mushrooms and have seen their grandparents that have passed away, have cried for six hours, had a mystical oneness experience. You know, you, you don't know. It's so many factors can come into play when it comes to that. Well, I love what you're saying. Cause I, for me personally, my most profound mushroom journeys have been connected to nature. And I actually just had one on the beach in Mexico, like a couple of months ago and the same dosage, which for me, I personally, I prefer two grams, um, of, of psilocybin for mushrooms is kind of my go-to. Um, I had a profound spiritual experience, almost ayahuasca levels of what this like Aztec thunderbird that looked like an Eagle came and appeared to me and taught me all these lessons about my life that were super applicable and beautiful. Like that's a very mystical experience. Um, the person I was doing it with, like saw me in this ethereal space and like floating, like an angel, like, you know, we had a very <laughs> mystical experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did the same, um, dosage and Moab, Utah, where there's a lot of native American history. And I ex had an experience in which I felt like I was native American and I was being guided by birds and eagles and taught so many things. I mean, incredible. And then I've done that same dose in my room, in my bedroom at home and have had like almost no experience or barely a little bit of family yeah. stuff I'm processing. So I think, you know, it's interesting to me how the environment, the space, like maybe this, the, the environment or physical space you're in can impact it. And also, I also try not to make any like blanket statement correlations. Like, and if you do it here, this will happen. And if this, yeah. if you do this, this, I don't like that turns into like religion for me. And I don't like that. And so I love that you're um, encouraging the openness of exploration and not getting pigeonholed into like almost a religious dogmatic, like this is how it works. And this is what you experience. And this is how you should do it. And this person gets this and bleh, you know, so that's really yeah. cool. Um, Absolutely. I am curious, you know, some people are probably like, I bet some people are eager to hear like, what, how much do you take? Like, what are dosages, <laughs> you know? And like, again, like I, same as you, like I've done journeys with people where that two grams I took that it didn't do anything for them or, you know, maybe they had less and they went into a super intense, um, spiritual space. So, but for me, I typically do between like two and four grams, um, of psilocybin for mushrooms would be typical. Would you say, and your experience in working with people with truffle, uh, psilocybin from truffles that it's less or more like what would be a typical dosage? Um, yeah. Range. So it's, yeah. So the range, so, so, um, we work with a dosage in grams with, let's say, a low dose for uh, truffles containing psilocybin is 15 grams of truffles. 15? Uh, 15, yeah. A medium mm -hmm. dose would be about 20, 25, and a high dose, 35 grams, right? Mm -hmm. So we scale it that way. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, let's say that a medium of 25 grams would be on average... Um, maybe someone listening who knows it precise because I, I always I always forget but it's about three grams the higher three grams of mushrooms the higher dose mm -hmm. so, so yeah that's three equivalent. and a half is kind of typical high yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly so when it comes to my my personal dosages in 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 mushrooms I tend to go pretty low um, because mm -hmm. I'm so receptive and extra sensory already for myself and um, mm -hmm. my awareness, you know, my journeying, my practices, my awakening experience, uh, ha so many of them happen through trans states without hallucinogenics, you know, right. um, through orgasm, you know, a lot of women have them. I'm going to name it here. Wow. A lot of women have it, you know, through orgasms and, and do not realize what they're experiencing because we can produce when we give birth, our body actually produces psychedelic uh, um, substance in through the brain and through the child. So uh, we are innate uh, knowledge of the doula hood of rebirthing and birthing, even if you're, mm. you know, uh, even if you're not born as a woman and you have the feminine qualities or that femininity inside of you, you can, you can also have that. It doesn't exclude, I believe, that it's only when you're born as a woman that you, that you have that. But these trans states, can definitely happen through uh, meditation practices, vipassana, mm -hmm. uh, fasting, uh, uh, going into dark chambers. Um, so many, you know, you're an expert and in, in body and, and through the body and movement, you know, all of these practices, yep. there's so many uh, occasions that I had 
what you would call an hallucinogenic experience created yep. out of my own body. Um, yep. As a child, I would see geometrical shapes in nature. I would experience mm. it. And mm. so uh, at a later stage in life, I started realizing or what these, what it meant. But for me, it was always normal. So my dosages are relatively mm. low. Makes sense. Um, I love yeah. I, Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off by any, no, by any go, means. Go. Um, <laughs> I love what you're sharing there. A couple of things. One, um, I, I dated a guy for a while who channels and that was very new to me. It actually challenged me quite a bit in the beginning. I was like, you're telling me that you're like channeling other beings and spirits. Like you're saying what they're saying, like they're like inhabiting you. I, I, I was so outside of my realm of normal that I was like, okay, maybe you're mentally ill or maybe you're, I, I fully admit, like, I was like, I'm not, I was not sure what to think of it, but over the course of that relationship, I will say that I had experiences with him that I'm like, yup, there's no freaking way that that wasn't happening because like, I, for me personally, that's my truth is because I being very candid, I got him really high <laughs> one time on cannabis. He had never been high. And he was like sputtering all over his words. Like he could not even finish a sentence and he thought he was being really funny and he wasn't. I mean, he's just one of those like way too high experiences. And I was like feeling bad. And then he fell into channeling and it was like the most impacting personal development speech I had ever heard with like perfect eloquence. Like he doesn't even know how to talk like that. Like I've never heard him say stuff like that. So that experience in and of itself, I wished other people could have been there. Cause it was like jaw dropping. Like, and so, yeah, I mean some, it, and anyway, my point is with him because he is kind of always tapped in at a different level than I think a lot of people are a little teeny bit of mushrooms went a really long, long way with him. So I think that's cool. You know, for people, it's kind of like, if you're tapped in like that, like if you were seeing geometrical shapes in nature as a kid, you kind of know that you're kind of tapped in, you know? So I think that's good yeah. feedback for people on, on, on dosaging. So thank you. Um, and also, yeah, and, yeah to, to add to that, you know, when it comes to dosaging, um, if it's your first time, you know, find a guide, find, find people yeah. that know what they're doing. Yes. Uh, don't just read up on, on things online and then think mm -hmm. and have, download a guide of how to do it. You know, you don't, you don't know the deep psyche of the human mm -hmm. brain and heart and trauma and the yep. lineage traumas, your grand, great, great yep. grandparents, everything that can come up and you need to have someone that understands what is happening to prepare yep. you yep. and to I help you integrate and to help you navigate because I've had the most experienced psychonauts needing a lot of help too it's like every time you step into that space it's like the very first time again so just bringing mm -hmm. in that disclaimer a little bit for people go yes hey, you know be mindful oh, <laughs> yes thank you for saying that i actually just yesterday um uh another another woman who does like healing work empowering work um just through talk therapy um she was sharing with me somebody um had they had they had tried mdma by themselves and had like a a, a trauma that they could never remember come up like a really severe trauma. And she didn't know how to approach it with them. I mean, they were basically in PTSD, like symptoms from discovering this trauma that they had suppressed their whole life. And I thought, this is why we need facilitators and, and, and things like synthesis where people can go to a space where people are trained on how to help you through that. Because, you know, in my perception, I know the medicine is trying to heal you. It's, it's it allowing these things to surface, but if you have no healthy way to cope or process with that, like that worries me for that person that the state that they might be in and you never freaking know you're exactly right you never know what's going to come up in any journey so it's like doing it by yourself I just don't recommend it at all because sometimes you're going to be faced you a lot of times probably you're going to be faced with some stuff that you're not going to know how to handle it so having a guide is huge so thank you for mentioning that um I also wanted to touch real quickly on what you said about um achieving altered states through natural means. Um, and I think anybody who runs long distance, like if you've been in that space where you're in like ultra deep meditation running very similar to the psychedelic space, it's just like, you're having all these epiphanies and realizations. And you're kind of in this, like, almost like your vision's like super clear and you're, usually, you're just in a different place. Like that is very similar to me, that experience one of the reasons I love running so much. Um, and, but I wanted to ask you about like, um, I've read this, I've heard this, I've had, I mean, tell me that through orgasm, they've achieved like these really deep spiritual spaces of insights. I admit I have not had that. I, can you share more like about that? Yeah, uh, sure. 
um, you know, this is a, a ancient knowledge where, you know, there's, a, there's uh, the word Tantra, everybody uh, probably has heard of it. Um, I'm not a Tantric expert, by the way, so I okay. definitely don't claim to know all of it. Uh, I'm just very curious by nature because um, of the, the way of my, I'm built, the, the, my experiences in life and having a lot of questions and wanting to understand. Um, so the, the, within sexuality, and there is an Egyptian tantric practice, which is very ancient. Um, so if, if those that are interested in hearing this, definitely go in. And then there is also so this Egyptian tantric practice, but there is also a Taoist uh, a practice from a female masters. Mm. Uh, this is a book I will share with you. So maybe you can put that in the show notes. It's a very interesting um, read about, um, about our body and our physical body and how we can create and harvest chi, which is life force energy, um, and how we can harvest it for longevity for the, wo for the woman. So, and what, what a male orgasm uh, gives to the woman and how the woman needs to keep her orgasm for herself. It's super interesting read. It's like, mm. it was mind blowing to, to me to wow. when I started looking into it of the things that I was experiencing. And, and there is another thing, our body has a capacity to create awareness. So for, I'll give an example, it's called the Chantra of the heart, which is our tongue is connected to our hearts, our heart. Actually, the, the, there is a, uh, like, a, like a bag around the heart where the tongue is connected to our, our, in our mouth. Now in the roof of our mouth, for some people, probably if you're listening, you're already starting to do it with your tongue. You can, you can feel in the roof of your mouth, you have uh, the soft and hard palate. And in between there is a bump or there is a dent. And I call it the mouth clit <laughs> because if you mm. rub it very gently, it creates uh, alpha brain waves, which is the what the babies have all the time. That's that's the sucking ability within the mouth. So if you do this a lot, a lot, a lot, it, you know, it's like a motor that we've never practiced in the body. So it takes a while. But if you would do this watching TV, reading a book, keep on doing it, suddenly you'll come into a very open, relaxed state as if you were in a meditative practice. Um, and sorry, uh, I, the, the, my, my internet connection got a little unstable, so I'm not sure if it's going to mess up on the, um, okay, on the no recording, worries. but were you, where are you saying is this bump or the sip in your mouth? So on the roof of your mouth, okay. so the top of your mouth, there is a soft palate and a hard yeah. palate. And in the middle, some people have a bump and some people have a dent. Mm. So if you go and feel it already, I have mm -hmm. a little bump and the more you stimulate it, it becomes slightly bigger. It's really like a clitoris, wow. so, but in the, in the mouth. And what happens is that you, you create alpha uh, uh, brain waves and <clears throat> these, these brain waves get you into a meditative state. So this is what uh, babies have too. So it's that actually that sucking ability that goes, you know, when we're in our mother's breast, we put a thumb in our mouth. That's to, that's the soothing that's what we do. Mm, wow. Now, I've uh, this is from a practice that is uh, from a school um, school of remembering from Drunvalo Melki Sedek, and he created a um, workshop, five day workshop called the Awakening the Illuminated Heart, and is taught by Hira Hosen, who's a really dear friend, and she dives very deep into the alchemy and sexual alchemy and uh, what this means, and all of it for the purpose of heightening your awareness, your vibration and ascension, mm -hmm. right? So we need our sexual energy uh, in a way for our ascension process. So if this resonates with you and it's the first time you're hearing it, I'm giving the credits to those that are, you know, where these teachings belong so you can look them up, but it's, it's there is so much more in it. There is so much more to discover through our bodies um, and I've had women, young women come to me uh, in my coaching practice with questions around, around this that were, that were so shy and didn't know how to name it, that had access through their orgasm to the Akashic Records, the Living Library, which is the collective database where uh, all of what happened in, in all of that happens to individuals is where you can grab it. It's actually like the, the soup of consciousness in the library, basically, right? 
And mm-hmm. I've had multiple women having access to this, to this space and, and accounting similar kind of experiences where I was, my favorite English word, uh, flabbergasted how many people could tell me exactly those things where they've never read about it, they never yeah. knew about it. Mm. Uh, so this is, a, this is an archetype or a, an, a conscious a space in, within consciousness where we have access to. And some people through meditation and some people through orgasms, you know, it, it's, it varies. Mm. Very cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I have read about this. I'm actually quite obsessed with ISIS um, from Egypt and I've, I've read about these things. And I, I think it's so, so cool because I feel like so much of our experience on earth has been shaped by shaming of sexuality and cutting off, cutting people off from sexuality. And I actually think that it has caused a lot of problems and darkness and in, in the world, you know, and from what I've read about it, it's basically like, sex is not just about like, it's not just about the orgasm. It's also about the, the altered states that are reached through it. Um, even before the orgasm and, and, and being able to like bring your goodness into the world through those states, you know? So I'm like, it's just so different. Cause like all we ever hear about it, it's just like, it's either functional or just purely like pleasure. That's it. There's no like spiritual depth to it. So thank you for sharing that. And then the book that you were talking about, um, was that Tantra of the heart or what was the book that you said that we could put in show notes? Yeah. So the book is the Taoist secrets uh, of the feminine uh, at the top of my head. Okay. I will Uh, make sure. And I'll get that linked up below. Um, okay. I, I have to ask this real quick. Cause I wonder if people are going to be knowing you mentioned, um, the U S and Oregon and a two-year plan. Like, can you give us any insights on what's going on in the background with that? Any updates? Yeah. Well, so I, I'm not involved in that because I'm based in the Netherlands and I'm focused here. Right. But, um, yeah. uh, there's quite some reading out there and there's a beautiful group, um, uh, you know, the, that's having an amazing initiative and, um, one of our founders is in Oregon to be able to uh, contribute to all that we've gained. We've gained so much data and so much knowledge and so much experience um, through our group work um, and working together with Imperial College that we can really contribute to the building of a safety container in a therapeutic setting mm-hmm. um, to mm-hmm. it. So what I know is that you know the, 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 the focus is really on bringing in um, training Mm-hmm. You know, how do we train people up? How do we make sure what is ethical? How do we can come in as a community to say this is where we stand for, mm-hmm. right? Uh, one of the organizations, the Northern Northern Star, is an organization that um, where you pledge. I mean, as an individual can, pl- can make that pledge, as a company can make that pledge, uh, mm-hmm. you know. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful indication of where we want to go. Although mm-hmm. there is no there is no control or the or there's no way of you know, I'm just saying a pledge, but there's no consequence, you know, so yet, or it's not organized that, that evolved that yet, that um, there is a, there is a actually an FDA approved system that could say, okay, this is a therapist, this is what you would need, this is the control, these are the learnings, etc. So this is all in the growing because mm-hmm. um, there is a, a university CIIS in California teaching how to work with it, and we've had uh, people f- come into the Netherlands to be a volunteer to learn hands-on mm-hmm. experience, because in, in in the U.S. you cannot. So all these people are mm-hmm. are learning, but legally they cannot work. So I know. <laughs> you're bound to the underground setting, which is again so unsafe and who right. you can with, and uh, you know all of that. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge problem. And I'm grateful to you guys for leading the way on solving that problem. Cause I went to, um, and I know you guys work or work with maps or you're connected obviously with maps, which if people not listening is the multidisciplinary association of psychedelic studies. I don't know. I mentioned them to you when we first talked, but I went to their conference, um, in Austin, Texas in fall of 2019. And, I was just blown away. You know, I'm like, I asked people, I'm like, who do you think was at a psychedelic science summit was the name of it? What, what, what kind of crowd do you imagine at this? And, you know, they're like, Oh, people will like smile or laugh or like, Oh, you know, and I'm like, you know, who was there like freaking neuroscientists and psychiatrists and high level health coaches and all, it was the most professional crowd ever of people who have had their lives changed. And they're like, we don't want to mess this up. We want to be able to help people heal. We understand the power of this amazing tool 
how do we do it right? How do you know, where everyone's looking for that, that answer. And I, I, I definitely feel like I, I have seen many times in many journeys, somebody will go through one journey and then they're like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my life. I just want to take people through journeys. And I'm like, whoa, Nelly, like, whoa, Nelly, like, like just like we, I really think there needs to be a lot of, um, uh, consideration on, um, doing it right. And so I actually, I have signed up for your guys' psychedelic practitioner, um, training, and I'm so excited to do that. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I, you know, I, I, ha yes. Have I brought people through journeys, like just privately myself, like friends. Yep. And do I, can I fully recognize that sometimes stuff comes up that I don't know how to handle that. I don't, I don't, I'm like, crap, go, go see a therapist. This is beyond my scope. Yeah. Like shit. I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be, um, done correctly. So I'm, I'm super excited that you guys are leading the way on, on educating on this, but yeah, I can't. And I also can't wait to have some legal options because it's like in health, for example, as a health coach, I'm not interested in stuff that only kind of helps. Uh, like I want, is it a slam dunk? Do I know for yeah. sure that this can create massive results in somebody's life? where they're like, holy crap, my whole life is better because of it. That's what psychedelics are. That's what plant medicines are to me. It's like a slam dunk, like your whole life is going to be better. And to not be able to do that legally is super frustrating, you know? So thank you for leading the way on that. Um, and I guess if people want to learn more about that, there, it is on your guys' website, which is synthesisretreat.com. Yeah, Synthesis Institute. So this is where we are uh, indeed and Synthesis Retreat will they both will guide you to, to okay. all the information you need to know. And, you know, the decriminalization in Oregon is very important because a part of that comes education, which is step number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then to also give credits to um, uh, other part of my heritage, which is Portu Portuguese and Portuguese, mm -hmm. have Portuguese, have Dutch, is in Portugal, mm -hmm. they already decriminalized all drugs since 1999. So you can really look at this other country and how far mm -hmm. and how it dropped in crime, mm -hmm. massive drops in crime and how they're focused on uh, selling and how I've done a, um, a conversation recently with uh, someone um, that, that actually created a cosmic care which is a care for festivals and education and they can mm -hmm. test. Um, um, and what happens is that the, the usage of the different substances. So what happens is that the difference between uh, marijuana and, and using heroin in Portugal was, was no difference. Uh, you know, so this is why the, the huge spike in abuse substances came up. And when they started doing this in that education round, it dropped down and it came in. Um, they're targeting the sellers, uh, not the users. So when, for example, if you would be caught with an X amount of, of a substance in grams, you would actually have a panel, have a discussion with you to see if you would need healthcare support, if you need to go to a clinic, how your environment is. And so that's so much more humane. So for yeah. Oregon to decriminalize is to bring in a humane approach mm. of people who are dependent on opioids, yeah. you know, and the difference between an opioid addiction and use of magic mushrooms and alcohol and that, that uh, uh, magic mushrooms or mushrooms containing psilocybin or truffle containing psilocybin is the lowest at the risk yeah. of any dependency. So just to bring in a little bit of this awareness of this, this legalization, but it's actually decriminalization of the, of the substances in Oregon and how amazing this will be in healthcare and education. Yeah, absolutely. I, you, you know, I have to share real quick. You made me think I, I had a mushroom journey once with a group of friends in which one of the women there was too nervous to do it. And so she, I feel so bad, but she lied and told us all that she had taken the mushrooms, but instead she decided to get drunk, really drunk. Oh, and, wow. and I, I will be forever grateful to her because I, while I was in my deep psychedelic state where you are so aware and so tuned in, you know, and the, the three of us were sitting there talking about like very, you know, deep, uh, you know, I always tell people, they're like, what is it like? And I'm like, it's like, you're having the most deep connected conversation of your life, either with other people or with God or the universe or yourself. Like, it's just a very deep connected conversation. Like it's real. And so we're in that space and we're talking about like, why do you think people like don't face their fears or blah, blah, blah. You know, like we're talking about that stuff. And she came over and she was just like, 
I don't know how else to say it. She was a mess, like a blubbering mess. She was angry. She was crying. She was like pointing at her husband and was like, you're mean to me. And like, just like making honestly, like a fool of herself. Like she, a beautiful, beautiful woman, like amazing woman. And I just saw what alcohol, where it brought her. I just saw where alcohol, an excess of alcohol, what, what state it put her in. And I was witnessing the state that um, mushrooms put us in. And, and it was something that will, I'll, I'll never forget it. I'm not saying alcohol is bad. I still have like wine at dinner and, you know, like drinks and (laughs) stuff, but as like a healing tool, I don't see it that way. (laughs) Um, and I think what, what psychedelics and plant medicines do is in my opinion, my experience of it is they help you heal what was causing the addiction in the first place. They help you address the trauma and the pain and in a beautiful, loving place so that you don't need to cope with those things as much anymore. Right. So it's actually getting at the root of it. So you can move on and be happy and free instead of like chronically dependent on escaping, you know, so that that's, that's how I see it. And I I love, you know, the opioid addiction is insane in the United States and look at the correlation, the war on drugs, like plant medicines have been illegalized. And it's like, I, I, I can't wait to see how those numbers turn around once these um, opportunities for healing are made legal here. So very exciting. Um, okay. Uh, question. Uh, the retreat. So I'm assuming, you know, with COVID, I think you mentioned like you guys aren't running retreats right now and we don't know when that will start again, but I'm curious, like, what is the experience? Like if somebody wants to, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Amsterdam. You can do a legal, <laughs> like you're, you're a, like, you're a resource. It's like uh, people say, well, how yeah. can I do mushrooms? I'm like, I can't help you. I'm sorry, but there is one <laughs> legal yeah. psilocybin retreat center in Amsterdam. So what is that experience like for people? Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the, the deed, like you said, during pandemics, uh, we cannot, uh, that's not a safe setting. And it's very, you know, uh, just to give a bit of context, we've in our team, we've been having such extensive conversations about what is, you know, uh, you can do yoga in a group as long as there is dif- distance. Uh, some massage and massage therapists could t- t- give touch. So you, you would think that we could hold a retreat because of those comparisons, mm-hmm. right? Now, the thing is, imagine you having an altered state of experience and you are going through grief as an yeah. example, right? And the thing that you would need, sorry for the for the bells, I'm getting messages, oh, excuse me. Um, um, so you're going through grief and you would need um, maybe just very simple a guide next to you who breathes or maybe holds your hand, right? Right. Um, that guide is maybe going then in a group setting to another person to help maybe with giving a glass of water. I'm just giving the most yeah. very small practical things, not going too deep into how a ceremony would look. Then that another person might have, because one in 15 might have some nausea coming up, might need some support with that nausea. Now, imagine this facilitator going from all these places. You need human touch. You need connection. Yeah. You need that care. And we cannot be fully masked, closed off right. in that care because our right. micro expressions and our, how we hold ourselves energy, physically, somatically, and how we use right. the somatic experience in our, in how the way we show up is as crucial for you to feel safe, to go deeper and meet maybe a challenge that you right. experience. So yep. giving that a little bit of context already coming into why we are very careful in opening up and why there is an extremely long waiting list right now. But, you know, I hope by you hearing this, that you realize that our ethical, uh, we want to be ethical. We want to be in integrity. Um, When we can open up, you know, the experience is is always in a space where we understand that preparation is as important because preparation is part of your integration. Mm. You already plant the seeds for the integration process. Mm. We have uh, with our facilitators that are experienced, uh, we have a one-on-one sessions and coaching sessions. So what that means is that, yes, you're in a group session, a group setting. Um, A lot of people that are their first timers, they go like, oh, could I do it alone? I don't, you know, I have a bit of group anxiety or I don't want to, you know, I don't know what's going to show up and I don't want other people to see right. because we have so much shame about right. our emotions, our physical, what? I can vomit? What? I can cry? Oh no, I don't know what others to see. But please believe me, if they've never done it and you're interested in doing it and 
you would go through our screening process because we have an extended screening process with a medical team mm -hmm. and you would come. The benefit of a group session and that community feeling is one of the key ingredients in your healing process. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I would always recommend everybody experiencing a group experience, mm -hmm. you know, with enough facilitators around. <laughs> That's very wow. important, right? D don't go to a group of uh, 15 to 20 people with only two facilitators, then there's a red flag. But yeah, you need enough people around to, to be able to support that group. So when you, you come in and we emphasize on understanding cognitively, so we do extensive preparation, we explain a little bit about what can happen and we're very light about it as well. You know, we, we, we take our work serious, but we don't take ourselves too serious. Mm. Uh, our groups, are, our facilitation groups are always formed in a way that there is a trauma-informed therapist Mm. There is someone with a spiritual practice, mm. and this could be from any practices. We, we, we really want to be inclusive. You know, one of my colleagues, Dan Kaiman, he's a, a, um, a Buddhist chaplain, so he brings in a lot of the Buddhist uh, qualities uh, into the work. You know, my, my training is really a, a molding of where you've heard already from uh, geom geometry knowledge, uh, quantum physics to... Uh, ancient tantric knowledge to uh, meditation, but also uh, indigenous traditions and working with healing with and without plants. So mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a group with different kinds of experience and then we believe that that's what we need as, as Westerners to meet the individually holistic, yeah. to meet all our needs because we need the feminine, the doula. And again, I'm not excluding, I'm not saying male or female, but we need the feminine to be present uh, very much in the, in the rebirthing experience mm. in a way. And that, or the capacity of having that feminine awakened inside of you. I've seen a lot of men with that part of awakened. So it's, but it needs to be present in that space, that nurturing, that being able to, to tune in into that intuitive space um, of the work, but we also need the cognitive th talk therapy. Um, and then on a practical thing, we, most of the time we have a sauna, we have breath work, we have nature walks, we have a fireplace, we have lush food. So we really also come in with uh, the Western luxury that mm -hmm. makes us feel that we are really taking care of and in comfort, um, uh, uh, yeah, for a lot and the of people, space is beautiful. I just have to say, yeah. I mean, it's dreamy, dreamy, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, we used to be in an old church that was rebuilt in a, in a treat in, in a uh, retreat center. We uh, unfortunately we had to leave due to COVID. You know, costs mm -hmm. and up to running retreats. Uh, but yes, any other place will look as lush as this one you see on the pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I love everything you're saying so much. Um, I have found in my experience, um, just, you know, doing these journeys with friends, like the, the greatest gift that I feel like I've been able to give them is receiving them in love and empathy and just seeing them and seeing their beauty and having compassion for what they've been through. Like that is so in incredibly healing for people. Um, the piece that I'm missing is like, I'm like, I, if something like a trauma thing comes up, I'm not there, you know, I did. So that's why, like, I I'm so that's why I've signed up <laughs> to learn from you guys, because, <laughs> I, I want to be able to help people with this, but I can only do it in a way that is, you know, ethical and legal and all of that. So I'm just so grateful that you guys are leading out on this. And that leads me to, I guess my last question, maybe we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, research resources, education, where do people go? So many people are like, how can I learn? Where do I start? Blah, you know, like how, yeah. where would you send people who want to just learn more about what the latest research and what's going on, you know, how does it work? All those questions that people have, where would you send them? Yeah, there are so many amazing sites. So one of them is the third wave, which comes in very um, academic and explanation, um, amazing podcasts, a good organization to, to just, um, yeah, for information, education. Uh, Entheonation is a very good one. It looks really uh, from the tradition, highlights a lot of the practices through the indigenous usage, mm. really has amazing articles on how to find a good facilitator for, for example, ayahuasca, or they do actually vetting of retreats. They go to retreats. So that's a really good mm. one. 
um, uh, psychedelic leadership, Laura Dawn. She's a beautiful sister. She has a podcast, amazing following. She's an educator and a leader in this space. Definitely follow her. And then you have another organization called Charkuna, was also very much about reciprocity, um, acknowledging ethical use, um, education, amazing articles also about women in psychedelics mm -hmm. and that focus. And um, I always say, you see the same white men in each conversation, Where, where's the rest of society? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. not, to bring, not, to, not to say anything bad about the same white men, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, so, so Chakuna has a really beautiful way to, to highlight that. So these are very different ways that are educational and approach a lot of the knowledge. And then there is so many books out there. I mean, I didn't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. um, what are some so, of your favorites? What, you know? Um, well, and actually my favorite books uh, are not, yeah, I mean, they're really good books related to psychedelics, but my favorite books are right now I'm reading um, The Sophia Code, which is yeah. uh, I've uh, read really it good. twice. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it's a really good book. So that, that's top. I always have about three or four books laying around. I'm also from James Nestor, A Breath uh, yeah. on Breathwork is also a very good one uh, that I love. Um, and uh, there is a elder, uh, Meladoma Somme from Africa, that is a, a psychologist and really brings in the bridging of his African tradition with uh, mm. Western psychology, who's written beautiful books about rituals. And it, again, mm. it's not necessarily around uh, psychedelics or, or plant medicines, but I believe it's very important to look at it broad. And my uh, top number one favorite psychedelic book that I read recently and blew my mind, and I was like, there she is, is from Maria Papasparu. She is the uh, uh, Mysteries of the of, uh, Psychedelic uh, Feminine. Mm. Um, very cool. Am I saying it right? The Mysteries of the Psych... Yeah. I'm always so bad on, on, on remembering titles and names and things. Uh, oh, that's so. amazing. You know, no, you're not. <laughs> you just listen to so many things. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll double check and make sure. And then I'll link yeah, all of that, that in the show. Yeah, notes. exactly. Yeah. Please do that. Cause otherwise if I say it wrong, then, but that book is amazing because it has a lot of different, uh, writers and experts in that book sharing mm -hmm. their perspective of the archetype and the feminine in the psychedelic work and the plant medicine work. And then absolutely on another one that I don't want to forget is uh, Francois Bourzat. Uh, her book is really, if you're interested in knowing more uh, how to work with plant medicines and a tradition from the Mazatec, she's connected to the uh, Mazatec elders and has hmm. permission to share how she's worked and her story is beautiful. Wow. Um, she's also very active in Oregon and uh, hmm. you know also has a, um, a training. A oh, training really? How, yes. How do you spell yeah. her last name? Borzat is B-O-U-R-Z-A-T. Okay, wow, awesome, awesome. Definitely oh, gonna check that out. She's French, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, yeah. any last, uh, thoughts or feelings from your heart that you would want people to know? Um, what would that be? If, any last? if they're resident, if this is resonating with somebody and they're like, Hmm, I feel in something here, like what would you share from your experience of working with people, you know, that may be a benefit to them? Yeah. So, so there is a, you know, once you have interest and you start diving into it, you lead a lot of beautiful things, and especially around the research. Um, I'm always want to bring into the awareness that this is one of many ways. This is not a magic pill. Mm -hmm. You still have to work at your shit. Yep. <laughs> you know, uh, yes. you still, you know, you you get shown things, you get realized. Uh, you still have to walk through the door. You still have to come into action. If you are codependency and within relationships with substances, with binge watching, you know, like not being healthy body exercise, all of that, that will not magically change. You know, you still mm -hmm. need to do a lot. So it's really one of many many tools mm -hmm. um, so creating a healthy practice of self-reflection whatever that is yep. is very important for you to be able to navigate a space where a sense of control is lost and all your senses are um, 
you know, are being stimulated mm -hmm. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Right. So that, so that's definitely one, one thing and trust the ability of the body to heal itself when you're given the right conditions. Wow. I love and that's that. That's through food. That's through breath mm. work. That's through thought. Mm. When you give the body what it needs, it will heal itself. We have an immune mm -hmm. system. We have a resilience that is amazing. We are amazing, beautiful beings, you know, cultivate that trust and your faith and, um, and all be will be well. No, I don't know if all will be well, but you know, that's already, you know, coming in in a different way into balance and um, in balanced relationship with yourself and your and nature and your surroundings. Mm, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, that, that is definitely what I have found is it's um, you know, the, the medicines are a tool. They're a really powerful tool. They don't do it for you. You know, you know, you don't have a, a hammer in your garage and it just builds a house for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you have, yeah. you can use it. It's helpful, but you still have to actually build the house. You still actually have to do the work and it's very helpful, but that's kind of how I see the medicines. And I love what that just, I mean, my whole like soul just like expanded when I heard you say that our ability to heal is inside of ourselves. It's so true. It's so, it's so true on, on, and on a soul level too. And, and a physical level. And, and I mean, I think that resonates with me so deeply because I see in our information age, like one of my biggest problems in health, like that, I just, it drives me crazy. Like I'm like, no, is when people come to me disempowered because they've been hearing so many voices of other people telling them how to do it. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. This is what you should. And they're, 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 they've tried so many things that they've lost trust. They've lost that connection with themselves and, and they're, they're shaming themselves. Well, I really respect that one doctor. And he said, I should do this. And I keep not being able to do it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like tapping inside of yourself. Like your, your soul will tell you, it will tell you. I, I say, sometimes I feel like a, a health coach as a health coach, my job is to just confirm with science why someone's intuition was already correct. <laughs> that I is, love that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel. And I'm like, like, it's in you, it's coming. It's like telling you it's, it's like, dude, you got to let this go or like try this or, you know, it's coming. And if we can listen to that, it our, our, I feel like our souls are constantly trying to help us constantly. And if we can just listen to it and follow through with it and trust it, even if it's scary and it makes us feel uncomfortable and we don't want to see that and we don't want to change it, but we know if we can, if we can do that, then I, 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 I I mean, I, that's been my experience of my life the last like five years of my life. It's just been listening to that gut intuition and following through and just magic happens. And I become, you know, sometimes you said you got to go through grief. You got to go through all, you know, you have to feel the pain uh, that you weren't willing to feel, but then you can heal. Like it all comes from inside. So thank you for, thank you for sharing that. And I just can't thank you enough for this entire episode. I mean, it's been so incredibly informative. I feel like I need a whole nother episode with you just to talk about like your soul and your experience and more on the spiritual side of things. But thank you for sharing that with everybody, because this is, um, so many people are, are interested, you know, and I, I would say like, I would not advise anybody do plant medicines unless it's freaking calling your soul, you know, but if it's calling your soul, like it, it's, it's coming. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all how I feel anyway. Like it's, it's going to happen. If you got that deep feeling, like it's, it's going to happen. But, um, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this. I'm like, I've got a reading list and uh, resources on websites I need to go through. So thank you so much for sharing all that with, with me and my audience today. Appreciate it. Thank you.